Hi everyone. So, are you in the process of drafting a will and you're probably thinking, what are the most important things I need to consider before actually instructing someone to draft a will on my behalf? If you're that person, this video is for you. So in this particular video, we'll talk about, I think, five things that I believe you should think about before actually approaching someone to draft a will on your behalf. So without further ado, let's get into it. My name is Yolanda Mnyangeza, and I'm an attorney and director at Mnyangeza Attorneys, which is a law firm that's situated in Johannesburg. So one of the five things that I think you should think about before considering drafting a will. Number one, think about who's going to be your executor or your executors. Who's an executor? So an executor is someone who's going to be responsible for administering your estate. So this person, for instance, will be responsible for reporting your death to the master of the high court. This person is going to be responsible for reporting your death um, to your creditors. And eventually, this person is going to distribute to your beneficiaries what is due to them in terms of your will. So this person, in essence, I would advise, needs to be someone who's familiar with the administration process. That way, the administration process can be, a mu can be much quicker and easier. And the second thing I think you should consider when choosing this person is, is this person going to be easily accessible to my beneficiaries? I've noted um, that with a lot of my administration matters, beneficiaries like to keep tabs with what's happening during the administration process. So it, it is a bit nice. It's, it's a bit nicer when they actually have communication and easy communication with someone who's an executor. Number two, if you're a parent and you've got minor children, I think you should consider jotting down a guardian for your child. Listen, if you don't consider drafting or, or recommending who should be the guardian of your child if you pass away, that decision is going to be entirely to, up to the court and you are not going to have any influence because you did not mention it in your will. But if you mention it in your will that you'd like, for instance, a certain person to look after your child, that will be taken into account when the decision is being made. If you don't, a uh, majority of the time, if one parent passes away, the other parent then becomes a favor in most instances. So it's really advisable that if you think there's someone specific that can look after the child, mention such a person and nominate them as the guardian so that at least your intentions are considered when the decision is being made. Number three. Another aspect that I think you should consider is that of the benefit or what you're going to leave behind. Uh, I've noted that a lot of people would have a lot of assets but would not have, for instance, an idea as to how they want their beneficiaries to benefit from their will. So think about this. You've got a house. How would you like to leave this house? Would you like to make them, all of your children, for instance, equal owners? Or would you like to make some as owners and some have the right to reside on the property? What do you think is the best thing for your particular circumstances? Think about how you want to leave this behind because if you don't and you just leave it anyhow, it could actually end up causing problems and not fulfilling the intention or being beneficial to your beneficiaries. So think about this. Think about how you want to leave the things to your beneficiaries. And the other aspect that I think you should consider is that of your beneficiaries. So who's going to be your beneficiary? Who's going to benefit from your estate? If you've got people in mind, name them specifically on your will. Where possible, use the identity numbers so that they are easily identifiable and there are no disputes once you pass away. <coughs> Sorry, where you're going to leave benefits to children, make sure that you also use their names. I've seen people use, for instance, the word child or children, which sometimes can be a problem. Here's why. 
If you say children, in the normal context or in the legal context, a child, um, which is yours, is a child that you've given birth to, or as a child who you have adopted um, and a court order has been issued to confirm such adoption. And so if you've got a child who you're raising who does not fit into these two categories, that child could actually be left out. So which is why I say don't use, for instance, a term such as child or children, rather use uh, specific names and ID numbers so that children are easily identifiable. Because if you don't and it, it, you just name them children, someone or what, one of those children that you look after could actually end up not benefiting because of this. The last thing I think you should consider, this goes out specifically to people that want to create what we recall, refer to as a testamentary trust. Now, a testamentary trust is a trust that you create in a will. So in your will, you'd create provisions that actually allude to you creating a trust. Now, a trust has people that we refer to as the trustees. What is the role of these people? These particular people are responsible for administering the trust itself. Which means, for instance, if you've left a trust and you have instructed that there needs to be a monthly uh, payout made to your beneficiaries and there needs to be some money that's invested, that work will be done by the trustees. So a trustee, majority of the time, is recommended that it needs to be someone who is familiar with the process of administering a trust and is a certain professional. Majority of the time, people choose between attorneys and accountants. But if you want to also nominate someone else, um, in addition, uh, just make sure that there is other professionals that are nominated so that the trust can be administered in accordance and can meet the standards. So I think if you've considered these five aspects um, before going to draft the will, it's going to make the process much easier and your intention is going to then be clear on the will itself. I hope this will be helpful. But then again, let's meet next week when we talk about something else that's important in the legal sector.